Hey y'all, it's Mike from Rogue Trotting, and this time you get just me in front of the camera because Derek's behind the camera. Hey Derek! And the reason is I get to nerd out on one of my favorite topics, which is public transit. Now, I promise you it's going to be interesting, and the reason why is that the Copenhagen Metro, it's part of how Copenhagen's going to be a carbon neutral capital, the first one in the entire world. It's a really cool example of how public private investment infrastructure actually works. There you go, US. And on top of it, the trains drive themselves. So it not only is a really cool and modern system, but it easily gets drunk teenagers across the city at 3 a.m. Kind of exciting. Let's go check it out. The city of Copenhagen is renowned for its commitment to sustainable development, and the Metro is a key part of meeting these goals. For one, it's an efficient mode of transportation and it pulls cars and buses off the streets, making more room for pedestrians and bikes and reducing any carbon output into the atmosphere. Further, it's able to connect the city together, making sure that neighborhoods are connected efficiently and effectively. So the Copenhagen Metro itself is actually relatively young for a lot of other European capitals. Debate on the system only happened in the 1990s and it was primarily driven by the development of the new Estel neighborhood over in Ama. This is a part where the city was going to expand itself since it was kind of running out of space in its city core. And so they decided they were going to develop some old industrial lands. And so to serve this area, they were figuring out how they were going to have transport get there. And there's a lot of debate. Do they use buses? Do they use light rail? Do they use trams? And eventually the metro won out. And the main reason why is it was seen as something that was going to be more safe as it wouldn't have any crossings. It would be a lot easier for it to run at higher density. And so it won out. And one of the cool things about it is that the system itself was actually funded initially by the development and the sale of the lands in the Estad area. The line itself originally ran from there into the city center. And so that's where M1 and M2 come from, which opened in 2002. The M3 and M4 opened up in 2019 after the city decided they needed to have further expansion of the system and create the new city ring in, which is the M3 line. And then the M4 lines, which run up to the north of the Nordhound neighborhood and are now going down south into the Suhound neighborhoods and eventually ending at the new train junction at New Elberg. Now, one of the interesting things about the Copenhagen Metro is that in some ways, it takes over from the purpose that trams used to have in the city. Copenhagen used to have an extensive tram network from the late 1800s until the 1970s. It kind of fell into disrepair in the 1950s and 60s as the city and government decided to invest more heavily in the Esto network into suburban rail and into buses. The last tram actually shut down in 1972, and a year later was the first oil crisis, which suddenly made the government reconsider their decision to go towards cars and buses instead of some sort of mass transit system. 20 years later, they decided to go and work on the Copenhagen Metro, and in 2002, the first lines opened. Now, most tourists are going to actually get to experience the Metro right when they get off their plane, since the Metro now runs all the way to the Copenhagen airport, and it's the easiest way to get from the airport to the city center. The metro is also super easy to use because it's the same setup as the rest of the Danish transport system where there's different zones and you pay for your fare ahead of time. There's no gates that you have to go through. You just make sure you get a ticket and then just watch out because there are going to be ticket checkers when you go on to board. You can buy the tickets from various machines across there or if you come here often or live here, you'll find the easiest way to operate is with your classic rice court. Just make sure that you swipe in before you go on and swipe out when you're done. Be sure to check in or get yourself a ticket because they definitely do check even on busy trains and a fine is 750 krona or about 120 bucks. The ticket from the airport to city center is 36 krona or a little less than $6 US. The rice court gives you a 50% discount roughly. Also know that you can bring bikes on board outside of rush hour which is from 7 to 9 in the morning and 2 to 6 in the evening. Just make sure that you get a bicycle supplement so you can pay for it on your ticket. Now, one of the neat things about the trains in Copenhagen is it was one of the first metros to feature driverless cars. So you get a beautiful view when you go in the front. You can see where you're going the whole way. One of the other neat things about the metro is that it runs 24-7. That's part of the beauty of the design that it's here. One of the cool things is that they've designed it so that they can actually take parts of the track out for maintenance without needing to have the entire system shut down at night like you have in places like New York and London. That means every single day of the week the system runs 24-7. Though, to be honest, they have metro buses that go every now and again when they take lines out of service. One of the interesting things about the system is that you'll see the cars themselves are much smaller than you'll find on much bigger metro systems like in New York or London. That's by design. The concept of the metro is to combine the beauty of an underground while also being able to have the frequency of a light rail system. The trains can run as quickly as 90 seconds between each other on the main line between peak periods. But don't worry, even though there aren't drivers here, there's a control center that's able to take care of this and make sure everything stays on the tracks and nothing runs into the wall. One of the unique elements about the Copenhagen Metro is the unique station design. In fact, it won an award in 2005 for design from the European Union. 
The reason for the uniqueness is it looks to do two things. Number one, it looks to cut costs by having a common design that can be utilized for every single station with a simple box design. And number two, especially being in Scandinavia where light is so important, they make sure that the stations do an effective job about getting natural light from up top to down here. When they built the M3 and M4 lines, they decided to change a little bit and have a unique color scheme for each station to reflect the local neighborhood around it. So a little bit of change as they keep developing the system. So the, the Metro itself has always been something that's been built with expansion in mind. The original M1 was built with the idea of expanding into the ESSA area. The M4 is similar, where it's designed so it can continue to expand north into the Nordhound area and south as well. There's discussions right now to have the M4 extend down to Vilo Hospital and also scoop back up north so it can go in towards parts of Valby and Felixberg as it goes up to the MDUP area. The whole idea is for the metro to keep up as the city grows, and that's also going to be part of a proposal for the M5 line, where the new Lanetahomen area on the north part of the city, as it expands very similar to the Esta area, will have a similar partnership, where the idea is that part of the sale of the new reclamation land will be part of what's going into the cost of the new metro line. There's three different proposals that we have for the, the new metro line that will go through there. It's a better way to connect that new neighborhood and also other parts of AMA to the rest of the network as well. So as you can see, the Copenhagen Metro is not just a static thing. It's something that's part of the growth of Copenhagen. And already it shows that it's done quite well because every year the ridership seems to expand what they originally had budgeted so that they can show that the system itself is really well received in a really critical part of the city itself. So I hope you had a good time with this video, a little bit different from what we normally do, but hope it helps show you that the Copenhagen Metro is more than just a way to move people across town, but also a really interesting part of the city itself. As always, if you have other thoughts on this, be sure to leave some comments below and like and subscribe to us as well so you can find out when we have new videos drop all the time. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.